and that's where we are today. We failed to reform when reform was a necessity. You do not escape reform when it is extremely important for your nation state building. We failed to build infrastructure. We failed to build hospitals, roads, as well as medical hospitals. And it is our failure, which actually we have passed the risk of becoming our worst enemy. When we see where we are today, if we are objective enough to take a step backward and just evaluate where we are, we will actually not only say we are at the risk, we are already there. Thank you very much. Munta Dijani, thank you. You criticize the Palestinians for not building institutions. <coughs> How do you build institutions when there are walls around them? How do you build institutions when key personnel are arrested the whole time? Actually, in Who do you put in these institutions? Tim, in 1995, there were no walls. We had a golden opportunity to build a paradigm of a democratic state, accountable, transparent, and we failed. We failed because we were not able to build institutions. Nepotism took us over. Corruption helped, and we, we drifted. But the occupation was still there. Of course. The, the occupation, occupation will always there. be there. But the occupation will not prevent you from uh, building institutions. Second, it the, will if your the personnel actually, aren't there. The it occupation, will. Of course it will. Tim, the occupation and the donor community encouraged corruption so they can at any one stage wash their hands and say, look, <coughs> there is no partner. They are corrupt. They had a chance. What can we do? Why would this the donor exactly, community encourage corruption? Why? Uh, you should ask them. You shouldn't ask me. I, I was an official of the Palestinian National Authority. I was the Director General of the Ministry of Economy and Trade. And I saw this. I was an insider. I'm not talking from second-hand information. I held three top positions in the PNA. And I resigned because of pro in protest of corruption. There is a serious problem which we have to address. There was no transparency, no accountability. And this is where, when you have uh, corruption taking you over, this is where you end. We are at the end because we did not have benchmarks, red lines, where we shouldn't have crossed them. And we are paying the price. Munta Dijani, thank you very much indeed. Now could I ask please, Sari Makdisi to speak for, against the motion. I think it's very important to bear in mind that when we're talking about the Palestinians, we're not talking about two or 300 politicians or bureaucrats, we're not talking about 5,000 or 10,000 or 60,000 guys with guns. We're talking about millions of people. Every single day, four million Palestinians in the occupied territories, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, East Jerusalem, resist the Israeli occupation nonviolently, day in and day out, irrespective of either petty corruption in the PA or grand corruption in the PA, or the squabbling between Fatah and Hamas. The second very important point to bear in mind is that most Palestinians don't even live in the occupied territories. Most Palestinians live in exile or as second-class citizens of the State of Israel. They don't live in the West Bank or Gaza or East Jerusalem, and hence they're even less party to the conflict between Fatah and Hamas or the squabbling within the PA or the corruption or whatever. They're not part of it. The, the millions of Palestinians living in exile have, despite 60 years of displacement from their homeland, retained a sense of cohesion, they've retained their sense of identity, they've retained the, the, the commitment to the struggle which binds them all together with those living in, under occupation and those inside Israel, and they will never let go of that, irrespective of the squabbling that happens uh, under certain circumstances uh, in the occupied territories. The last thing I want to say is that all Palestinians have a sense of what it is that makes them a people. And part of what makes them a people is their commitment to justice. Because they realize that the conflict that they are part of was produced by and is sustained by a monumental act of injustice. My mother was born in Jerusalem. And the squabbling between Fatah Hamas and the corruption in the PA will never remove the fact that she has a right to go back to Jerusalem, the city in which she was born. 
And like my mother, so with millions of others in exile. And I think that's a very important point that overrides and overshadows all of the corruption and all of the squabbling, the sense of a community, the sense of a commitment to a cause. Sari Magdisi, thank you very much. Where is this sense of unity, where is this sense of justice when you see the flagrant abuse of justice and human rights take place in the Palestinian territories every day? And what use is it among the diaspora when it's not applied to those people who are in the place where you hope one day to have a sovereign Palestinian state? Well, there's two questions there. I don't, the question of a sovereign state, we should remove, we can come back to that in a, in a moment. But I think the more important point is that the corruptions of the administration have nothing to do with the way the people are living their lives. People want to get to their jobs. Why, why don't they? They want to get to their farms. If they can't live they in, to they can't live in so justice, forth. if people are murdering and they're not brought to justice, you don't think that concerns their daily life? It concerns their daily of life. Of course it does. No, but the point is they're not party to it. What do you I mean, mean they suffer from it? They're living in a state. They suffer from it. Where this is inflicted on them. They're not living in a people. state. That's the whole point. They're living they in a place then. They're living in a place that's, that's being taken out.